And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Fiji. Thank you, Co-Chair. At the outset, allow me to align this statement with that delivered by Barbados on behalf of the small island developing states. Co-Chairs, on behalf of the Fijian delegation, I wish to thank you for all the efforts uh, conducted in the intercessional period through the series of informal consultations that canvassed views of member states and major groups and have resulted in the zero draft, which is the basis of our negotiations here. We also note the work conducted by the informal working group on targets and indicators. And we emphasize that since targets and indicators will be at the core of implementation of any framework, they must be carefully articulated. The Fijian delegation will, of course, uh, participate constructively and assure you of our support in our collective efforts to arrive at a constructive document for the post-2015 disaster risk management framework in a consensual manner. Co-chairs, at the first PREPCOM in July, the Fijian delegation outlined the initiatives at the national and at the regional level in the Pacific, in particular highlighting the integrated approach taken on climate change and disaster risk management. Since then, Fiji has convened its first ever national platform for disaster risk management and climate change, which drew from our two existing programs, have identified gaps within, and proposed a way forward to harmonize them. Recognizing that any program on disaster risk management and climate change will require ownership and implementation by all stakeholders to be effective, the national platform meeting including representation at all levels and across society, including village leaders, district and provincial administrators, government, private sector, and civil society members. Special groups such as women, persons with disabilities, older persons, and youth were well represented, and they made significant contributions. Fiji would support a similarly inclusive approach at the global level in articulating the HFA2 framework. The other major development in the Pacific which will guide this delegation's participate in this preparatory committee was the holding of the third international conference on the small island development states in September 2014. That, the document from that conference acknowledged the special case of small island developing states and their unique and particular vulnerabilities, as well as the disproportionate impact that disasters can have on SIDS. It acknowledged that disasters have increased in intensity and been exacerbated by climate change. The international community committed to supporting the efforts of SIDS in disaster risk reduction and management. I'll not restate the elements of Para 52, Suffice to say that this delegation will be looking to ensure that relevant elements of the SIDS outcomes documents are incorporated into the post-2015 DRR framework, and we trust that partners in the international community will honor their commitments when negotiating our outcomes document here. We look forward to building on what is already in the zero draft on integrating climate change and disaster risk reduction so as to, so as to achieve an outcomes document that is concrete and implementable. Such an outcomes document will, of course, require that we ensure that appropriate means of implementation are built into it. And, of course, it will need to have coherence with other international processes currently underway. Allow me to end, Co-Chair, by echoing what was said by Ambassador Williams of Barbados. If we are indeed going to require two additional blocks of days in December and January to continue negotiations of our outcomes documents outside of what was set aside for the PREPCOMs and the GA resolution, SIDS delegations traveling from afar must be assisted to participate, as this would not have been foreseen in our planning, and particularly given the importance of DRR to SIDS. Thank you, Co-Chair. I thank the distinguished representative of Fiji.